بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا وحبيبنا وقدوتنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد صلاة تنجينا بها من جميع الأهوال والأفات وتقضي لنا بها جميع الحاجات وتطهرنا بها من جميع السيئات وترفعنا بها عندك أعلى الدرجات وتبلغنا بها أقصى الغيات من جميع الخيرات في الحياة وبعد الممات إنك على كل شيء قدير آمين يا رب العالمين وبعد بقينا إن نعم الله سبحانه وتعالى we praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all forms of praise because only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is worthy and deserving of praise. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to send His choices, blessings and mercies upon our beloved master and guide, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, upon his pure and chaste wives, his noble and beloved companions and all those who follow in the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam until the day of Qiyamah. Ameen ya Rabbil Alameen. Before we continue, we request the brothers to please come forward inshaAllah. Let us fold the masjid from the front. Alhamdulillah, we've been making this announcement. We make intention that we are fulfilling the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We are following the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to create the environment of sunnah in the masjid, and that inshallah it will also make it easy when it's time to stand up for the for the fard salah that we have already completed most of the sufuf so that we do not delay. Barakallahu feekum. We see the masjid is quite empty today, alhamdulillah, people must be on holiday. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them afiyah, inshaAllah. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for gathering us in the masjid today. In the most beloved place to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In a state of iman, we are grateful and we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this. There are people that are not with us here today, they have gone out obviously on holiday, they are spending time with their families. We take a moment to remember our brothers and sisters in Palestine and all the other places that are being affected, they do not have their family members anymore. Many of those families have been completely wiped out, and many of fathers have lost their wives, their daughters, their sons. Many children have been orphaned, they've lost all their parents, all their siblings. We take a moment to remember our brothers and sisters wherever they may be, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant them afiyah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to relieve their suffering. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept their sacrifices, to accept their iman, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with them in this dunya and the akhirah. So I saw something very interesting on social media. You know, obviously we entered into 2024. And I saw something on somebody's status and they had this new year, new me, with a picture of a snake shedding its skin. And I don't know if people are catching on. But the image that we are getting, people are saying new year, new me, but he's still the same snake as he was last year. He's still the same snake as he was last year. So it got me thinking. It's very, very interesting. I've got something that I wanted to share, something that I thought of, you know, for myself personally, and I felt that it would be beneficial with the brothers and the sisters to share it with them. Going into 2024, how we can approach this new year to be better people. So yes, we are always touching on things like self-improvement, we are always touching on things like following the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, because these things are always going to be relevant in my life, it's always going to be relevant in your life. We are always striving to be better, striving to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, striving to increase our love and proximity to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, These are things that will always be necessary and always be relevant for you and I. So, how do I stop being the snake? May Allah protect us. Is this an example that I'm giving? I found the image quite interesting. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Al-Kayisu man dana nafsahu wa amila lima ba'd al-mawt. The intelligent human being, and we've heard this hadith before, the intelligent one is that individual that suppresses his nafs, he suppresses his desires, and he makes an effort to prepare for what is coming after his death. He prepares for what is coming after death. Now why is this an important factor? He suppresses his nafs. What does this mean? Suppressing his nafs. Suppressing his nafs means that he gives preference to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over his own desires. 
Meaning, I don't do what I want to do. I suppress my desires. And I do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants me to do. Or I do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prefers for me to do. I do what the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has instructed me to do. This is the intelligent person. Wal ajiz, a helpless individual, man atba'a nafsahu, is the one that follows his desires. Meaning that in his heedlessness, in his negligence, in his forgetfulness, whatever circumstances he finds himself in, the effect that that has had on this individual's heart, he prefers his desires over the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he follows his desires. In that moment of heedlessness, he will sin. In that moment of forgetfulness, he will do something that is contrary to the sharia. Or in the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, something that Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam dislikes. Yet he is still foolish enough to think that وَتَمَنَّ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَتَمَنَّ عَلَى اللَّهِ He consciously sins. He deliberately sins and then he still has hope. He still has hope. That is a helpless individual according to Rasulullah. So why is this interesting? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Inna Allah la yughayru ma bi qawmin hatta yughayru ma bi anfusihim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to change the condition of any individual. Nor will Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala change the conditions of any group of people unless or until they do not change what is within themselves. So what do we learn from this, my brother and sister in Islam? You and I coming into this new year of 2024, we need to start making better decisions. We need to start making better decisions. How can I be the intelligent individual that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke about? How can I stop being the snake? How can I stop being the helpless individual? I say that I want all these things. I say that I want to be a good Muslim. I say that I want to be uh, uh, punctual on my salah. I say that I want to read Quran. I say that I want to learn my deen. I say that I want to, I love the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I say that I, I want to follow the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I say that I want to be a good husband. I say that I want to be a good father. I say that I want to be an honest businessman. I say that I want to be a good son. I say that I want to be a good brother. But what are my actions denoted? What do my actions say? What do my actions say? What comes forth from me? Is it the snake or is it something else? So we need to start making better decisions as people. And there are many, many aspects in our life that require better decision making. Everybody's circumstances are not the same. We find an individual in the corporate space. People will look at him. Oh no, he's sitting in traffic. He didn't pray salah. Or he's working late at the office. Maybe he read his salah at the office. What's wrong with him? Why didn't he come to the masjid? Every single individual circumstances are not the same. You cannot judge the next person based on yourself. We often make this mistake. We often make this mistake. We have a problem with the next person because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made something easy for us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it possible for us. We judge the next person based on our own circumstances. And this is wrong. We need to stop judging other people and we need to stop praying for them. We need to stop judging them and we need to stop, we need to start praying for them. So these are part of our decision making. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts a person in a situation. He has got to choose. He's got to choose now. I'm coming into 2024. There is a musalla close by to where I work. I can choose to pray my salah in the office. Or I can choose to go to the masala and pray. It's a choice that I make. So going forward, we need to start making better decisions. If I'm in a corporate space and I have been negligent in this regard, then I need to start making better decisions from 2024. My first intention is that I'm going to start praying whatever salah, maybe it's salat al or salat al-asr, wherever it is that you are at that time. But for that salah, I'm going to be at the place of prayer. The other salahs, Allah make it easy for you, ya 
Allah make it easy for you. The next individual, maybe he's in a space of deen, or maybe he works from home, he's an entrepreneur, he's got flexibility. So he can be in the masjid for five times salah. His circumstances are different. Now I say to this brother who is in the masjid, MashaAllah, Akhi, you are in the masjid, but physically you are in the masjid, where is your mind? Is your mind also in the masjid when you come to the masjid? Or is your mind somewhere else? Is your mind on your business? Is your mind on your bank balance? Is your mind on your, uh, this issue? Is your mind on that grudge that you have? Where is your mind? Where is your heart? So for that individual, your challenge for this 2024 is how you can bring your heart and your mind into the masjid with you when you come here. You leave your dunya at the door with your shoes. And you bring your heart and your mind into this masjid for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is a choice and a decision that you have to make. It's an effort that you have to make going forward. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us tawfiq to do this insha'Allah. There are so many different aspects in our life. You look at your health. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لِجَسَدِكْ عَلَيْكَ حَقْ Your body has a right over you. Your body has a right over you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given every single one of us a body. It's a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How are we treating this body? If I look at my expenditure over the past year, 2023, maybe I went into a dip. Some of us got saved with the boycotting that some people were getting involved in, that they stopped buying McDonald's, they stopped buying whatever they were buying. Now they stopped eating unhealthy food. But whatever your intention was for stopping, the point is you are giving your body poison. Your body has a haq over you according to the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, meaning you need to look after this body. So if I've been making poor decisions with regards to my health, this year I need to start making better decisions. I need to start looking after my health. I need to start looking after my body. Why must you wait? Until you develop diabetes, or you start developing some other illness, or you start developing some other problem, medical issue, that you could have avoided by being a little bit more disciplined. So we need to start making better decisions with regards to our health. We need to start being more conscious. We don't have to eat three meals a day just because they call it breakfast, lunch and supper. We can also just eat when we are hungry. We don't have to eat just because it's a time for eating. I have an interesting story. My uncle stays in Mauritius. He's not a Muslim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be in Hidayah. But what is very interesting, he's got this one friend that had to take off work. He was sick for two days. So the issue was, brother, you were off, you're sick, what happened? He said, no, I missed lunch. I missed lunch, so I became sick. So I had to take two days off work so that I could recover from missing lunch. So we need to understand that this is a real story. I'm not making this up. But the interesting thing is that you get people like this also in the world. We don't have to eat just because it's a time for eating in Mauritius. When it's time to eat, you eat. Whether you're hungry or you're not hungry, it's lunch time. Otherwise, they get physically ill. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them afiyah. But the point is, may Allah give us to feel to start trying better. Let us stop making more intelligent, intelligent decisions. If I find that I'm struggling for money, sometimes it's not always because I'm not earning enough. Yes, we make dua for the brothers that are struggling, the sisters that are struggling. We know of one lady, for example, she's selling two sisters to survive. She lives in a one-room house. She does not even have a toilet. She uses a bucket because she cannot afford a home that has a toilet. There are people like this that also exist in the world. We don't know about them. May Allah give us tawfiq inshallah to assist where we can. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to help those who are struggling and suffering. But it's not always because we are in certain circumstances. Sometimes we just make poor money decisions. Sometimes we do have a habit of every time we go to the shop, we buy a chocolate or we buy something. And I don't know if anybody saw the price of a slab of chocolate nowadays, but it's just getting more and more. Chocolate used to be 15 rand now, 25 rand, 30 rand for one chocolate. Every day if you're buying a chocolate, that 30 rand starts adding up. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability. Again, Amen. our wealth is also an amana from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your wealth is an amana from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have a responsibility with that wealth. 
So may Allah give us the tawfiq, inshallah, we can start planning on how we can make better money decisions. Start cutting out the unnecessary things. And we can actually start putting that money away for something better or for something more important. Better decision making is the point that I'm trying to make going into 2024. Al-Qais, the intelligent one. We've got to suppress this nafs. We've got to suppress this nafs. We need to. When are we going to do it? If not now, then when? I'm looking at so many brothers here in the masjid, mashallah. And this again, I'm not pointing a finger at any single individual. I'm just going to give an example. So let us understand the example. Min Haythul example. As an example. We say that we love the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, And may Allah make it such. We believe that every single one of us, we love the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We say that we love the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I don't want to get into the technicalities of the difference of opinions of the scholars and what Madhab says what. The point is, if there are certain sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu that we do not have in our life. For example, the miswak of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa coincidentally I don't have my miswak with me today. But the miswak of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I know about the miswak. How many years of my life have passed that I know about the miswak of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? But at what point in my life do I want to start practicing on that sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? I know that the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is to eat with my hands. But I'm just used to eating with a knife and a fork. I'm used to using utensils. At what point in my life do I want to start eating with my hands? I know that it is the sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to wear a thobe. Now, I did, the Sharia doesn't ask you to wear a thobe. We must understand things properly. The Sharia asks you to cover your body properly. It is an added plus and an added virtue if you follow the dressing of Rasulullah. This is as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Uswatun Hasana, the best example, the most beautiful example. There's nobody stopping us but ourselves. I know that this is the sunnah of Rasulullah but at what point in my life, again I'm not pointing fingers at anybody brothers, this is just an example. At what point in my life do I want to start practicing on the sunnah? I know that a beard is sunnah, but for how many years of my life has it gone by? And yes, I may have whatever reason, like I said, there is fit and there is this and that opinion and this. But at what point in my life did I want to start practicing on the sunnah of Rasulullah Everybody can't sit on the floor and eat, but for those who can, when are we going to start sitting on the floor to eat? Now again, these are different levels. As I said, everybody's circumstances are not the same. It is permissible to sit at the table, completely permissible. But there is what is permissible and then there is us making better decisions. There is us making effort to get closer to Allah. There is us making decisions to bring ourselves onto a higher level of deen. I've been praying Salah for 30, 40, 50 years of my life. But at what point in my life did I want to start understanding what I'm saying in my salah? I read the surah Fatiha, I know the surah Fatiha, I know X, Y, and Z surah, but do I know what it means? At what point in my life was I going to start learning what it means? So if we really want to improve our life going forward, if we really want to improve our life, our deen going forward, we need to start making better decisions, brothers and sisters in Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. I want to be more respectful. I, I say I want to have good character. I say I want to have good character. And I heard a very, very beautiful quote. The quote said that circumstances, circumstances do not make us who we are. The situations that we find ourselves in, they do not make us who we are. Rather, they reveal to us who we truly are. So you have within yourself a certain nature. You have within yourself a certain nature. You find yourself in a particular situation and you behave in a certain way. It is not the situation that made you behave like that. Rather, it is you that already had that behavior within yourself. So if somebody ruffled your feathers, they upset you and you start using vulgar language and you start becoming aggressive, you start becoming rude. 
then that is you. That is your nature. Not the person that ruffled your feathers. It was your decision to speak those words. It was your decision to act in a certain way. So going forward to 2024, we need to start choosing to be respectful people. We need to start choosing to, instead of being angry, we need to choose the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we need to control our anger. We need to choose to be honest in business. You can't say it was the nature of the business deal that made me cheat my partner. It was the nature of the business deal that made me be dishonest. I cheated him out of X amount, so many thousands of rand, but it wasn't my fault. So who made the decision if it wasn't you? So we need to start choosing to be honest businessmen. Why do we want to be honest in our business dealings? A truthful, trustworthy, honest businessman. A truthful, trustworthy and honest businessman is going to be with who in the Akhirah? You will be with the Anbiya. You will be with the Salihin. You will be with the Shuhada, the, the martyrs. You will be with the pious servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah. If you are truthful. If you are honest. So these are decisions that we make. These are choices that we make. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq to start making better choices and better decisions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. There's many other things that I could have said on this topic. I, I hope that we got the message, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability, inshallah, to practice on what it has been shared.